harvest treatment of the vines determines the next season's success. As soon as the grapes have been picked, the vine roots begin desperately growing, sucking up nutrients and storing them as fuel for the next winter and spring. Therefore, on the very night after harvest, we irrigate the vines for a full 12 hours until morning. And then we repeat this for the next three nights. About a week later, after irrigation, we fertilise the vines. We use chicken layer manure pellets because they're slower releasing and there's less chance of fertiliser runoff. The only downside being that they do attract an awful lot of flies. We used half a tonne of fertiliser per hectare, or one soda can per vine. Start by making a shallow half moon trench under the base of each vine. Make sure there's a drip irrigation hole on top of the trench. Next, pour the fertiliser into the hole and then cover it from the flies. Like many old vines, this vine has succumbed to dead arm disease. Two out of its four arms are dead. I want to cut these off to prevent the disease from spreading any further. To confirm whether an arm is dead or alive, all you need to do is lightly scratch it with a saw or a knife. As you can see with this arm, it's all brown underneath and very, very dry. Even if I dig deeper, it still stays brown. There's no signs of life. Whereas let's compare it with this one. Underneath the brown layer, we can see there's a yellowy whitey layer. And that's a very good sign that this arm is alive. Now I know for certain that this arm is dead, all I need to do is saw it off. Now that the diseased wood has been removed, all I need to do is seal it. One important tip is not to saw the arms directly from the main trunk. Leave a good 5-10 centimetres between the main trunk and the wound. That will prevent any new infections from setting in. Another important thing is to check the weather forecast. Only do this job if you know there's going to be a dry week afterwards. Otherwise the rain will bring some fungal spores and then you'll have another infection yet again. Don't be lazy. Don't leave any of the sick wood in the vines because they will make the other vines sick. Instead, make a big fire! Once the autumnal rains revive the parched summer soils, we begin to plough, driving the tractor very slowly, at least twice through each row. We ensure that each and every blasted weed that's popped up since the summer ended is smothered in soil. While doing this, we also ensure that the soil is properly aerated and turns into a soft bed for the seedling root systems that we will soon be planting. After that, we scatter the seeds evenly down the rows using a 20 litre bucket of seeds per row, or 75 kilos a hectare. Please bear in mind though that we do plant a little extra just to counteract the effects of a mischievous flock of chickens. This year we will be planting korog, a wheat rye cross, to improve the soil's organic content and hence improve its water and nutrient holding capacities. Next year we'll rotate to legumes, we'll probably be using lupins and they will be fixing the nitrogen from the atmosphere and transforming it into a water soluble form that the plants can absorb. Along with the mesmerising patter of rains, autumn brings a plague of weeds intent on sucking up all the nutrients from the vineyard. We mow them down at least every three weeks with a weed eater, or once they've grown taller than my Wellington boots. Unfortunately, we can't get all the weeds. We're forced to leave some of them near the vine's trunks for fear of nicking the vine trunks with the weed eaters 
and therefore damaging the vines and possibly even killing them. The last job of autumn is to check for diseases such as leaf roll and red spot or roibla in Afrikaans that show their symptoms in autumn. Unfortunately for us, over 30% of our vines have red spot and there's nothing we can do about it. But if you happen to find a vine in your vineyard that's showing the characteristic symptoms of red leaves or curled leaves, then you need to pull out that vine straight away. And if less than 30% of your vineyard is affected, you can hope that it won't spread to the other vines.